Hi folks, in this video I will show you how to implement exponentiation by squaring in Python. Exponentiation by squaring is a classical number theory algorithm. Before we start implementing exponentiation by squaring, let's implement a simple exponentiation algorithm in Python. Uh, let's call this directory pow for power, and I will implement a simple pow algorithm. I will call this uh, function mypow to distinguish it from the built-in function pow that Python has. To this function I will pass a base and an exponent, and well, this will calculate the base raised to the power of exponent. So let's make it clear, uh, raised to the power of exponent. And the way I'm going to do it in this naive first approach is I will start by storing the result in a product variable and then I will loop um, an exponent amount of times like this and uh, I will multiply my result with the base. So you can see this loop here is repeated uh, an exponent amount of times and each time the the product is multiplied by base. So in the end the result is base times base times base times base exponent times and so the result is really uh, base to the power of the exponent. Let's try it out. Let's uh, call it with a base of 2 and an exponent of 10. This should give a 1024. Uh, oops, so I made a mistake here. It should say in. And when I run it you can see the, that the result is is correct. Uh, so uh, let's try to change this a little bit and say okay let's try to do 2 to the 10,000 or maybe uh, a thousand. And you can see if I do 10 to the 1,000 the resulting number is quite big. Fortunately Python supports arbitrarily large numbers but um, as we increase the exponent this number is going to, to get quite large. So what I'm going to do is I will instead of calculating the actual base to the exponent power, I will calculate uh, the base to the exponent power modulo some number. So I will pass this number here, let's call it uh, mod, and what I will do is I will calculate this number instead. And you can see if I pass here the number, let's say 1007, you can see it returns the, uh, the, the uh, exponent, the, the exponentiation modulo the number that I passed here. Let's make it a little bigger to see a few more digits. Uh, and this is similar to what Python does in its built-in pow function. So let's make sure that our uh, our implementation is correct by comparing the, the Python result with what we did here. And you can see it's actually the same. So now um, observe that I can uh, actually add uh, the modulo operation to every uh, Every multiplication step. So I can do the product as a product modulo mod because if I if I have uh, something like this and I want to calculate this you know, modulo m, um, number theory tells us that I can first do modulo on each of the individual components and then do a modulo on the on the result. So this uh, helps helps us cut uh, cut out a few. Uh, operations along the way and I can remove it from here and you can see the result is is still the same. So now to motivate this uh, implementation of the exponentiation by squaring algorithm what I will do is I will increase this number to quite, to quite a bit let's make it um, let's make it um, maybe a million and let's run it and see if it runs so you can see it took a little bit maybe this was not noticeable let's make it 10 million. So here the, the exponent is, is 10 million, so it's computing 2 to the 10 million. And if I run it, you, you can see it takes a couple seconds. Uh, if I increase this farther to, to 100 million, you can see it takes so long that um, we won't wait in this video. Okay, let's break it here. Uh, ah, damn Python. Okay. Okay, it's broken. And let's see if we can optimize this out. So make it small again so that we can test it and what I will do is I'll use a clever algorithmic trick to to make this kind of better so in order to show you this let's open up the whiteboard and um, let's, let's assume that we wish to compute the uh, number B uh, okay so 
I wish to find out what b to the e is for some numbers uh, b to b and e. And of course, all of this is uh, done modulo some some number that I will not write there. It's it's applied during every every loop. And let's say that e is the number thirty seven, for example. Uh, what we will do for this algorithm is we will write this out as a binary number. So 37 in this case is uh, 1, 0, 0, uh, 1, 0, 1. And this is in base 2. It's the binary representation of the exponent. And notice that um, what I can do is to, to evaluate this b to the e, what I can do is I can evaluate b to the first power base 2, and then I can multiply this by b evaluated to the 100th power, base 2 again, and then I can multiply with uh, b to the power 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, and this is again uh, base 2, and you can see that this is this is true because if you multiply the same base with different exponents, the exponents really get added. So this is really equal to 1 plus 100, uh, I mean 1, 0, 0, and then um, plus uh, this here. And uh, of course, if you add all of these together, you get e. So if we can calculate each of these, each of these individual exponents uh, quite quickly, we can just multiply them together and get the results. So this is exactly what we're going to do. And um, the way to do this is uh, we will first uh, we will we will go through the to the binary representation of our exponent, and uh, we will start at the digit at the end here, and then we will move to the digits uh, towards the left until we are. Uh, we have considered the whole number, and we will only concern ourselves with um, with the with the one one digits here, like like I did in this example. So in this case, we just need to produce three different powers of b: b to the one, b to the one zero zero, and uh, b to the one zero 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 zero. This is exactly what we're going to do. Uh, so as we move through the number, if the current digit is uh, if the current bi binary digit is 1, we will compute the the respective power. And if it's a 0, we will just uh, skip the digit. So let's try and do that. So I will create a, a new function here, my power 2, which is going to be uh, faster. And it's going to do exactly the same thing, but it's going to do it in a better way. So what, it, what this does is calculate space raised to the power of the exponent. But uh, it does so... Um, Efficiently, uh, so let's say um, say uses uh, exponentiation by squaring uh, for to, to achieve good performance, and we will say what exactly good performance means. And uh, before we go into the implementation of this, you should notice that uh, one observation that makes it clear why this is good is uh, say you wanna. Say you want to compute b to some some power of two. So let's say you want to compute b to the sixteenth power. And in you will notice in our earlier algorithm, what we did was we did sixteen multiplications. But um, it's easy to see that you don't really need to do that because if you take b and then you, you square it, then you take that and you square it, you get already b to the fourth power. And if you take this. You square it, you get b to the eighth, and then you get b to the sixteenth. So every time, uh, what you can do is you start with b, you compute the square, and then you keep that, and you multiply it with itself to get the new square, you multiply it with itself to get the new square, and so on. You can see if you have a quite large number here, like uh, 1024, which is 2 to the tenth, all you need to do is 10 squarings. So this is the intuition of uh, why this can be done quite quickly. And, uh, of course, our exponents are not always going to be powers of 2, uh, but they're going to be something else, like here. So this is why exactly we are using this um, method of breaking, breaking our powers into powers of 2, which is essentially what these here are. Okay, let's go ahead and do the implementation. 
So what we will do is um, we will go through the digits, the, the binary digits of exponent, and this is going to be our for loop. For loop. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I will slowly decrease the exponent by erasing one binary digit from the end each in each uh, iteration until there's no no more digits left. So this is written here as exponent is is bigger than zero, uh, and this this means if I ha if I have not erased all the, all my binary digits yet. Uh, we need a special case if the exponent is actually zero at the beginning, or, or maybe I think we can handle that as a non-special case. Let's see. Okay, so I will start with a product of one, as I did in my previous implementation, and I will also return this result here. Um, what I will do is here, I will take the exponent and remove the last binary digit. And because these are binary numbers, if I just um, divide by two, this is equivalent to removing the last uh, binary digit. Okay, so this, this does exactly that. And so in each iteration, because we have erased all the last digits of exponent, all we have to do is, is look at the last remaining digit of the exponent and see if it's a one or not. So I will do this check, and I will use the bitwise end operator for this. So you can read this as if the last binary digit of the exponent variable is exactly equal to one, then uh, I will do I will calculate the b to that power, and add it or multiply my result by it. Uh, okay, so um, let's see. This is my result. So what I will do is I will multiply it by base. Now this is not yet completely correct, and the problem is that base is just my number b. But I don't really want just my number b at this stage. I want to have the relevant power of b. So um, if I'm working on this uh, and I'm in the i-th iteration, let's see, why doesn't this work? Okay, if I'm in the i-th iteration of this loop, what I want to multiply my product by is not exactly base b, but base to the respective power of 2. So if I'm in, in the first iteration, I, I want to multiply it with b to the first power. If I'm in the fourth iteration, I want to multiply it with b to the 2 to the fourth. Right, that's exactly what I want to do here. So what I will do is, of course in the first iteration this is correct. If the last digit of my exponent is a 1, I just need to multiply by base. But in, in the next iteration, I want to multiply by base squared, and then in the third iteration I want to multiply by base to the fourth power. So in each iteration I want to change my base and basically square it. And I'm writing it as that. This is in line 21. You can see uh, this is just a squaring of the base. So let's see how this works out. Uh, I have not added my modulo yet, and so let's let's try to have a slightly smaller exponent to see that it's working out. Okay, this is actually correct, and that's great. And uh, let's add back the digits to have an exponent of one million. And what I will do is I will run this without the, the modal operation, and you can see it produces the correct result still. Ah, uh, oh, I'm not calling it actually, that's stupid. Let's try it one more time. So maybe I made a mistake, but I didn't detect it yet. Okay, so yeah, obviously if you, if you take 2 to the uh, thousandth power, it will produce a large number if, if, you're not mod if you're not applying modulo. So let's make sure that this is the correct number, and you can see it actually is. The last digits match here, and the first digits match here also. So that's good. Um, so let's, let's add the modulo operation here. Uh, what we will do is we will uh, take the modulo of base and take the modulo of the product as well um, during every step uh, in the way. And notice because the product variable here is just multiplied with uh, different bases, it's just a multiplication of, of b raised to various powers of 2, what we can do is we can um, cut it out, cut out a few digits, well, mo modulo it in every step. And we can also cut out the digits of the um, constituent um, terms of the multiplication in each iteration, and this will not affect the correctness of our algorithm. Okay, so given that um, this works, that's great, and now let's try with a larger number. So we tried 100 million before, so this makes a million, and uh, let's make it 100 million and see if it's fast this time. 
Okay, you can see it's actually quite faster. Uh, we didn't have to wait. And uh, it works, that's great. And um, this is actually how Python implements uh, exponentiation. The, the built-in pow function here is implemented in exactly this way. Um, and before I finish this video, let's take a quick look at the complexities of these implementations. We have the mypow uh, function. This is going to be the go of exponent times the time it takes to multiply any number. Because you can see this is a loop that repeats exponent number of times. So you will have an exponent here. And I will write here a polylog of, um, let's say, the, the result, right? Um, and what this means is that uh, I'm spending some time doing this multiplication. And as the number gets larger, each of the terms is closer to, to this number. And to multiply two numbers, I, I take about polylog time. Um, so yeah. Now, if I want to calculate the complexity of this one, uh, what I'm doing here is I'm taking the exponent and the number of uh, iterations in this loop is really the log of the exponent because the exponent is cut in half in every step. So this is going to be exactly the log of exponent and then um, times the polylog of e to the b. Um, but something to notice is that because mod is applied in each step in both of these algorithms, and maybe we can write a shorthand notation for this as well just for consistency, um, then this polylog is not really a true polylog, it's actually just uh, it's just going to be um, in the order of the, uh, of the modulo, right? Because uh, we're cutting it out to the modulo. Uh, at every step. And we can say, um, in the worst case, uh, if the base is quite close to the modulo, this is going to be around there, right? Uh, so you can see this complexity here is uh, not very good, while this is quite better. And in a number of theoretic algorithms, we say that this complexity is exponential because uh, the number itself that is passed as the input is in the complexity while here the um, complexity is polynomial to the size of the input and notice that in number theoretic algorithms the size of the input is exactly the logarithm of the input. As always, thanks for watching. If you have any questions or suggestions about future computer science topics you would like to hear about, leave a comment in the section below. If you like this video, feel free to thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, well, till next time.